Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to our playthrough of Sicily 43, the World War II tactical combat game system from Assault Games. Both the German and the US forces have their eyes on the objective which lies halfway between their two force pools. It's going to be a race to see who can get to the objective first and a dogfight to see who can hold it till the end. Let's jump right in and get started with the action. Here's a quick overview of our battle. We have our unit cards for the US and the unit forces on the right side of the battlefield. Unit cards for the German forces and the German units on the left side of the battlefield. Our situation here is in July 1943, US forces advancing up past the Jello beachhead, trying to get control of this farmstead here, the, the key of which is this two-story building right here. Now there are three objective points, buildings here, buildings here, and buildings here. The winner of the scenario is going to be the one that can control this farmstead in the middle. Both sides arrive at roughly the same time. The battle is over who can get this and then hold it for the nine turn scenario. If we're thinking about US strategy, we have some very fast Stuart tanks over here. So I think we're going to actually hand some Rangers over here in the Olive Grove. We've got some machine guns, anti-tank gun, a mortar team here, as well as uh, four squadrons of uh, four squads of US Rangers. Our goal for the US, I think a strategy we're gonna take is try to get some Rangers on the Stuarts, try to push up as quickly as possible before the Germans can react. I don't think they're gonna have the speed to be able to contend with the US forces. Get some Rangers up here in the farmstead and hold it. Take it and hold it before the Germans can get there. From the Germans looking at it, I do not think that they're going to be able to match the US speed. So the German rough strategy is gonna be take this Panzer 3J and this Tiger E, which are manned by experienced crews, I believe they are, veteran crews here. These have a, some good firepower in particular. The Tiger is slow, but it packs a nasty punch and it's very good defensively. We can pull these up in this open area here and just wreak havoc while we bring our infantry in closer. Wreak havoc from kind of two angles on the US forces up here. Hopefully then push them out and take ground once we can reduce the forces. So I think as the Germans, we're gonna concede the farmstead here and do as much damage as possible after we let them get in there. So that's the rough strategy for each side. Now we do have this, this is the setup right now as it's dictated by starting conditions. However, there is one feature of the US Rangers that I want to point out, which basically that says after the setup is done, US Ranger squads can move up to two hexes away. Their startup, uh, their kind of special feature here is recon patrol. After all units have been set up at the start of scenario, this unit can be placed up to two hexes outside of its faction startup areas does not apply if a reinforcement. So we're gonna use that special ability to reposition some of these US forces. One of which very simply, this is the starting area for this, for the US. We're gonna push this Ranger squad up here a little bit closer to the farmstead, giving us a shorter route to get there. Now there are three more Ranger squads over here. Let's take a closer look at how we might wanna rearrange those. So US forces have Ranger squads here, here, and here. Our objective is to get the Rangers onto the Stuarts. To do that, we wanna have them move onto the Stuarts. This one is adjacent to a Stuart tank already, so that's not a problem. This squad, however, here, we're gonna have it go one, two, and actually move it farther away from its objective, but this will get it movement of one onto the Stuart, and then the Stuart goes forward. So that should work out really well. Lastly, I think we're gonna take this Ranger squad, bump them up two hexes this way, which will get them a little bit closer to uh, their objective here in the middle here. A little bit of open ground, but uh, I think otherwise we're okay. So that's using the Rangers recon ability to uh, kind of move them around a little bit after the setup. And now our setup is completely done and we can transition into turn one. So let's roll for initiative on the first turn as the scenario doesn't dictate which side has it. Uh, we're gonna let the blue represent the allies and the red represent the Axis forces. Higher die roll gets initiative. Blue as the allies with a six to one, they have the initiative in the first turn. So we've shifted out of the initiative phase in the turn into the planning phase. Now we are, as I mentioned in the episode zero here, which has a lot of the background on it. In this scenario, we're not going to use the command cards, but we are going to use the command points. So the planning phase is really where you start to use all those command cards in the game. So we can pretty much hop over that phase in our scenario. However, what we come to now then is to the assigned command points phase of the planning phase. That part we do need to do. So for both the Germans and the US, we're gonna assign their command points the U.S. get two command points for their armored, uh, armored formation and six here for the infantry formation. And so we're going to take these eight command points 
uh, by the rules, we can put three off to the side as kind of a reserve pool here that can be applied to any unit later. But we do have to assign these five here. So I'm gonna kind of think about this for a second. And generally this is done simultaneously and in secret. We're just gonna do it in secrets because we're doing a video. So let's figure out where we wanna put the command points for the US forces. As always, we don't have enough command points for the actions we'd like to take, but roughly we wanna get these two Ranger squads onto these two tanks and push them up. That's four commands out of the eight we've got. I want to probably move these Rangers up. That's five. Then uh, next up, we probably want to move the Sherman as well. That's six. And then if we can push up the mortar and maybe the anti-tank gun or the machine gun, I'd like to get them out behind this blocking terrain here, these heavy woods, and get the machine gun up, the machine gun up into it, of course. So we'll have to leave some units behind, but let's take a look at what that might mean for a rough objective here with our command points. So of the eight, I've assigned five, two to the Rangers, one to the 57 millimeter anti-tank gun, one to the Stuart and one to the Sherman. We'll probably use one of our extras for the Stuart and another extra for the Sherman. And then we do have uh, the, over here off on the right hand side, we have our machine gun team. I'll probably put one on that or maybe the mortar team or something. We'll figure it out as we go along, but that's the rough plan for the US uh, for initial phase here. Germans have five command points and two gives us seven. We're gonna put three off to the side here as kind of a reserve pool. And so we have four to assign. Definitely wanna move our armor up, so that's gonna be pretty easy. We'll assign one to each of the two tanks and then uh, probably move this rifle to these two rifle squadrons down, try to get them moving up into better firing positions. So let's give a couple to our rifle platoon, our rifle squads here and see what that looks like. All right, so we dropped one each on the Tiger, on the Panzer, and then two on the rifle squads. And we've still got three extra, so we can push up here, probably maybe with that anti-tank gun to the salt and things like that. But lots of options to use with our, our extra three command points here. And with that, we have finished the planning phase. It's time to slide over to the support phase. So now we drift into the support phase of the turn. This is kind of the turn, the phase before all the action really happens. One thing that can happen here is that anti-tank guns can change their facing, but we're not gonna do that. Um, the second thing, however, that could happen quite a bit in this battle is this mortar team can fire. Indirect fire happens during the support phase. It is, it does cost a command point and an action if you do that. And you have to be able to either see the hex you're firing at or have a unit that's adjacent to you spot for that hex, be able to see it. That brings up the question is what's the range kind of considerations in this game and how does line of sight work? So let's take just a brief moment to talk about both of those things. These rifle squads have a range of 10. Now that's a long shot. It's not generally going to be very effective, but three, six, nine, they technically could open fire from a range perspective anyway on some of these frontline US units. Uh, the, the armored units generally have a range of 12 to 14 as a maximum range. So again, both of these units just a little bit outside of each other's maximum range. So as we look at this battle, both sides have to converge to start having effective fire. They're still just kind of on the extreme edges of range. Indirect fire by the mortar team, however, is three to 11 hexes, three, six, nine, 10, 11. So the question is, could this mortar team drop some anti-personnel fire right on these tank hunters or some of these frontline German units? That brings up the question of line of sight and how line of sight works. In this scenario, there's only one type of uh, terrain that actually blocks completely the line of sight. That's these heavy woods hexes right here. And then there's another one over here. Um, these here are actually light woods. This is a cratered woods terrain. Everything else in this uh, scenario that has elevation, things like these uh, vineyards here, these br this brush, this rocky terrain, uh, these light woods, even this building, these two building hexes here, they all degrade line of sight. So technically from a, a blocking line of sight standpoint, you know, this machine gun here can see right along this line up into this part here. Uh, and so from a blocking terrain, if you go down a hex line, you take the, e the, the most conducive to firing. If you go down a hex side, so this doesn't block it going right down this hex side. So technically it could kind of see from this, from a blocking terrain pr perspective. However, for each degrading uh, hex you go across, you can go across a maximum of two of them. You can't go across three. So this machine gun here trying to spot, for example, these rifle squad in this, in this building here, one degrading hex, two, 
here's the third degrading hex that it has to cross. It can't see past this one. So because of the degrading terrain issues here, this mortar really can't drop fire up in here. We could probably put some smoke down here, but instead we're gonna have it move up. So long story short, uh, nothing's gonna happen during the support phase. US are gonna pass, Germans are gonna pass, US are gonna pass, and that ends the support phase of the turn. And we're gonna go right into the action phase. But hopefully that helps explain just kind of some of the tactical considerations as we're considering line of sight and as we're considering range and what we're trying to do with our forces. We have to converge to put on effective fire and we wanna look for opportunities for lines of sight between some of these kind of uh, randomly blocking terrain. But once the units start to get up into here and here, we should start to see some firing happen. Finally, we get into our activation phase. We're gonna start with the US because they have the initiative this turn and we are going to kind of fulfill our objective. First goal is to get some of these Rangers on these M5 Stuarts and have them start pushing up towards the, the objective here, the farmstead. So what we're gonna do is uh, we are going to activate the Ranger here. We're gonna move it right and we're gonna just load it up onto the M5. This is a pretty simple process, but let's give it its command first. We have these two commands that we've given to Rangers. We're gonna use one of them. So we're gonna flip it over. That leaves the US with seven remaining commands. And now let's come down and activate our unit. Movement is a normal action. So the Ranger is gonna get a normal action. And then all we do to load it up onto the Stuart is just move it on top of the Stuart. Now the Stuart has not moved. So the Stuart we know underneath can still act, but that finishes the, the squad's turn. And we've now loaded them up on top of the tank and they are ready to go. Let's go to the German, uh, let's go to the German activation now. Uh, we're gonna push these rifle squads up here into this, this is a created, some craters here with some trees and brush. It's pretty good defensive terrain. And I think if we get there sooner than later, especially in, in this initial action, we should be able to start laying down some good fire because it starts to clear a lot of this obstruction behind our units here. We've only got these rocks in front. So as units start to move through this open terrain, we should be able to put some fire down here from these this squad, squad up here. So we're gonna have our uh, squad action up off camera. I am flipping over one of the command points on that rifle squad. We're gonna give them a normal action because we're just gonna use their full movement points. Now their movement is two. And so we're gonna have them go one into brush, which only costs one movement point as a ground unit, and then into the craters here for their second movement point, which expends their movement point, and they now are positioned in these craters and should have a pretty decent fire. Now we could say, could the US do some reaction fire? Uh, these units here actually have their line of sight blocked. This one would have to cross three degrading hexes to get there, so it couldn't. So it's a pretty safe move. This unit may be able to fire, but it's a long shot, and I think we might wanna do something else with it. I don't wanna burn up a command here for some of these other units that are off uh, kind of farther away. So the US are gonna basically let that happen for the Germans right there, and that's the Germans activation for their part of the turn. Let's go now to the US activation. US activation, we're gonna get this second uh, Ranger squad loaded up here on the Stuart. So the same thing off camera, I'm adding, removing one of those command tokens on that Ranger unit. We're gonna move the Ranger onto the Stuart. That's gonna be a normal action. So it is uh, riding on the Stuart now. We've got about 20 US soldiers on the Stuarts ready to surge forward here. I kinda wanna wait a little bit because I want those German, that German armor to move first so that if it were to kinda decide to take a pot shot, it's gonna have already moved up. I think the Germans would probably wanna move, but. If we gave it a really juicy shot with one of these Shermans loaded up with infantry, I, I suspect they may take it, but I wanna do that yet. Let's go to the German activation. As we did in the previous activation, we're gonna flip over a activation token, a command token for one of the rifle units, and we are going to have this rifle squad here, which is actually, you can see these trenches right here, that's a pretty good position, but we're gonna push them up here into these craters. Uh, this will give us another pretty good line of fire, and I don't think there's so much blocking stuff, it just doesn't seem like it's a very good shot at this range. So as the US, we're gonna let the Germans do that. So normal action, one, two, and they head down into these craters. This rifle squad is in pretty good position now, ready to perhaps lay down some fire on the US as they advance. Let's go back to the US now. For the US, one of the things I wanna do, we, we gotta get this machine gun, uh, half squad, this machine gun team out behind this heavy woods here. It's blocking it. So we wanna push them up into the heavy woods here. So we wanna activate them. Now I did not, before the, at the beginning of the turn, we didn't issue a command token to them. So this is how we're gonna to have to be able to handle that. We have our three unassigned command tokens. We're gonna to take one of the unassigned command tokens, drop it on the machine gun, and then activate it. Now we can use this machine gun unit in these, this turn. Also, we're gonna perform a special action here with them, which is a hide action. This simulates the action of crawling because they're only going a short distance and they have a movement of 
two, and they are not a slow unit. So we're gonna have them basically simulate crawling up here, and this makes it harder for them to spot and they gain a little bit of defense. Now they do lose an attack die the first time they fire here, but still, I think it's gonna to be to our advantage to be hidden up into these uh, woods here. So we've had the machine gun team crawl up into the woods and they should have a pretty effective line of fire now on any German units that start to advance on the fire on the farmhouse there. So I think this is a good position for us. Let's go to the German activation off screen. We're gonna move this Panzer J, uh, 3J up. It's kind of out of range, even if the US move up with its, uh, it's got a maximum range of 12. So we're gonna start it moving forward. Now, one of the concepts you can do in this turn is what's called a fast action move. Um, infantry units, if they do it in a turn, you get an extra movement point per turn, basically, is what happened. We'll talk, happens. We'll talk about some of the nuances of that and the impact of that, but we're gonna have the Panzer J, do, 3J do that. Uh, it's got a movement of three. By doing a fast action, it accelerates, it pushes its movement, it's gonna be able to go four. Now, armored units can move into any one of their two forward hexes. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, right up to here. U.S. really doesn't have a very decent shot that's not obstructed either by that anti-tank gun or by some of the armored units that are way back. So we're gonna let that unit um, action happen. Now, you might be wondering what would be a penalty for that. At the end of the turn, anything that's yellow flips over and goes to its other side. So it's an attack die minus one. So by going a little bit reckless on the next turn, if it were to try to fire, it's gonna lose its weakest attack die. So there is a penalty for basically moving fast action to action in the subsequent turn. But uh, for right now, that's not a problem. The Panzer 3J bursts forward into the open plane here, approaching its objective to try to kind of get in good position to lay down some fire next turn. For the US, like we did with this machine gun team, we wanna get this anti-tank gun up to be, be into this brush here so that this brush doesn't continually degrade its line of fire and it's gonna have a much better chance to shoot on units moving up. Now, you might think we could do a hide action here, have them crawl up, but an, an, an anti-tank gun, this 57 millimeter anti-tank gun, has the designation slow. It's written on its card and they can't do that hide action. So we're just gonna use a normal action on them. We did allocate a command point to them, so off screen I'm flipping that over and then we're going to have the anti-tank gun move forward here roll up into position in this brush and we're going to give them a normal action here so they are better positioned to fire next turn there really isn't an option for opportunity fire from the germans on this unit either again both sides kind of closing in um, the anti-tank gun could fire but it's not a very good shot and we're not going to we're not going to take it let's go to the germans like the u.s the germans have this 75 millimeter anti-tank gun which has this brush in front of it that degrades the line of sight to here and creates enough problems and it's so far away that it's not going to be quite effective unless we can kind of get some of this stuff out of the way. We're going to use a normal action for them, push them up into the brush. It costs one movement point to move up there and they have a movement of one. So we're going to use a normal action on them. Now they did not have a command token assigned to them from the, the pool at the beginning. So I have to use one from the three, the reserve pool. Uh, so the Germans have activated and moved this uh, anti-tank gun, pushed it up into the brush up here to get a better shot at the, the farmhouse and the farmstead and all the activity that happens around it. As we come back to the US side now, now that this anti-tank gun has moved and can't fire, it's time for us, I think, to start pushing forward with these units. This Tiger way over here on the other side of the board has a range of 14, three, six, nine, 12, 13, 14. So technically, these Stuarts here, which we have carrying infantry, can move six if they fast action and can get in range. But I think we have a plan for bypassing that because we're gonna take this Stuart right here, which uh, has a movement of five. It's gonna do a fast action movement, go one, and it's facing uh, this way here. So two, three, four, five. Now, as it moves five here with the infantry on top of it, it comes in range of this Tiger here. But if we look, this hex that it's in and the hex that Tiger's fire in front has to go through one, two, three degrading terrain hexes so it cannot shoot. So it's saved five and then six and it's up here. It's close to within close distance of the objective and it's kind of moved behind the hidden terrain here to take advantage of that. Plus the Germans have moved. So the Stuart closes in. We did have a command token on that Stuart, by the way. And so it is used. Now this, the tank here gets a fast action movement on top of it. The infantry on top had a normal action, so they're on top. So I guess we'll do something like that to mark that. Now we go to the German turn. They have three actions left to perform, and I'm gonna give up here on the tank, the Tiger tank taking a long shot here. I think that if the US are crafty enough, they'll be able to force it 
to either have a terrible shot or not have any shot at all. So we're gonna move the Tiger. Now we did give it a command point, so I'm just flipping that over up top here, leaving the Germans with two commands left to execute in this turn. We're gonna do, uh, likewise, we're gonna do a fast action, same thing as the Panzer 3J did. Tigers only have a movement of two, with a fast action it's three, one, two, three. We're gonna slide up here right behind it. This will give this Tiger just a lot better command of this firing arc in front of it as it goes forward. Let's go back now to the US activation. It's really kind of free of worries now as all of the German armor and long range anti-tank stuff uh, has moved. So we can kind of start to move up these uh, Stuarts and Shermans without really worrying about things. We did give the Stuart, Stuart a command action, so we're gonna use that now. Flipping it over, the US have two left after this. Uh, the Sherman here has a movement of three. We're gonna have it do a fast action movement of four. One, two, three, four, coming this way around the side here. That's gonna give it a, actually, nope, sorry. We're gonna go one, two, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna come this way, because I wanna save the other one. So the Sherman's gonna go fast action here, moving through this, pushing up towards this side to try to get some shots on the armor this way. Now let's go to the German activation. We have two commands left for the Germans. We're going to uh, use one on the rifles squad right up here. So I'm taking one of the, the free command points and activating it there. We're gonna put a normal action on this rifles unit and they are going to move through the vineyard here and then up into this trench position. And that will give them a normal action for this turn. And so they are just kind of moving up. This is a pretty good defensive position and it kind of is a, a, a kind of a, a transient point here on the way up to some of these better positions. And we wanna definitely get the Germans, I think, ready to surge forward down towards the farmhouse if their tanks can start to lay waste to the American uh, advance here. Let's go back to the US turn. Now this infantry has moved onto the Stuart, but the Stuart can move and we wanna have it do a fast action. It's got freedom of movement here as all the German stuff that can damage it has already moved this turn. So we are gonna have it go to a fast action. We have to use one of the commands from the reserve pool, leaving us with just one command. Moving forward, one, two, three, four, five, six. For the US closing in on the farmstead here, just off to the other side, it is, uh, Ready? This is kind of a bold advance here for the U.S. and that, that Stuart gets a fast action here. So U.S. with one command left and the Germans with one command left. Let's go to the Germans. Kind of roughly thinking about how we might want to get some of these infantry forces up here into the action. This, these tank hunters are good at, against tanks, but they have to get within a range of one. Uh, they don't have a lot of range for that, so um, it's probably not the best choice of units, come to think of it. We are going to have a normal action on this uh, tank hunter's unit here, however. Actually, let's give them a uh, fast action. So we're going to give them um, a, a kind of a higher action here, because that will give them a movement point of three, and that will allow them to push up one, two, three, all the way up into this brush up here give us an interesting position, I think, and potentially a chance to move up even into this rocky element and get some action coming up forward here. Now, there's nothing really from the U.S. that can fire at him. Everything is kind of blocked or out of range and stuff like that. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll leave that there, and that's a fast action. And that is, that's a free command point. We have to put that from the command pool onto the, tie, onto the tank hunters. And that ends all of the German activations in this turn. The U.S. have one left. With the one command left for the US, we're gonna take one of our free commands in the pool, give it to the 60 Miller Mortimer uh, team, and then uh, we could do a hidden movement here, but I think they're pretty safe where they are. So we're gonna have them do a normal action and just slide up one hex here into these, this brush behind the machine gun here and the anti-tank gun. Now, this is nice because these units can spot for them and now they should be within range to fire more effectively in upcoming turns. So hopefully this mortar team can deal some damage for the US. With that, both the Germans and the US have exa exhausted all of their actions in this turn. So we're gonna go to the last phase of the turn. Now, in the organizational phase of the turn, a number of things happen. What, but the biggest thing that you do is change the status markers of the units, and that's the first thing you do. Now, to show how this works, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna show it for everybody, but I'm gonna kind of give an example. White markers are removed. So basically, the normal action markers that are here on these two rifle squads are removed, which meaning they're at absolutely normal strength and normal function in the upcoming turn. Yellow markers, however, are flipped over. So this tank hunters exhausted some more energy. They ran really fast up into the brush here. So they're a little bit tired. Their attack die for the next turn is minus one. And leg units can't do a fast action 
in consecutive turns. So they cannot do a fast action in the next turn, and if they were to try to fire this turn, their firepower is going to be weaker. So that's a consequence of them pushing their movement in the first turn. Now, I'm gonna make these same status changes here, removing the white markers and flipping the yellow ones over. We don't have any red or black markers on here, which are another type of status marker. We don't have any here, so we won't talk about those right now. I'm gonna flip these over for the whole, all the units on the board, and we'll take a look. The other two things that could happen in this uh, organizational phase is if any objectives had been taken, they would be flipped over to show what side was controlling them, uh, but that didn't happen. And then if there were smoke on the battlefield, it would be reduced uh, by one level, but there was no smoke on the battlefield either. So at the end of our first turn here, uh, we've got the US forces advancing cautiously up through this brush now, moving moved out of that olive grove. German forces here moving out of this vineyard here into the brush here, closing in on the farmhouse. German armor pushing aggressively up towards the farmhouse. U.S., however, on a mad dash assault here. We didn't actually activate these rangers. We should get them going on the next on the next moot part of the, the battle here. But the U.S. Rangers, two squads, loading up onto Stuarts, racing forward, trying to get to the farmhouse before they can be withered by, by German fire here. This should be an interesting action in the next turn. And our Sherman, whoops, it should be on there, pushing up to support the Stuarts from the south as well. The very last thing we have to do is advance the turn marker from turn one to turn two, and now we are set to start turn two. I was originally thinking to do two turns in this episode, but there's a lot of explaining to do as we talk about things for the first time. The next turns, I'm sure, will go quite a bit faster, but uh, to prevent this first episode from being really long, I'm gonna cut it here and come back quickly, probably tomorrow or the next day with episode two. I'll put a link to it as soon as it's ready. We should get a lot more action in turn two as both forces now are within range. We'll see you then, bye.